Hey everyone, I have a lightning pack for sale on Gumroad right now, but if you want to make it for yourself instead of buying it, keep watching. The file on Gumroad will have a few variations and built-in animations if you grab it there. If you have ideas for more tutorials or things you'd like to see in my shop, let me know in the comments. I'd also like to thank you all for helping the channel pass 400 subscribers. When people comment and subscribe, it lets me know that this content is worth producing. All right, let's make some lightning. All right, so here we are in Blender 2.9. We just have our normal scene right here, and I'm just going to delete everything in it. And we just have this one collection right here. So first thing I'm going to do is add in a plane, go into edit mode and press M and collapse it. So it's just one point right there. Make sure you press one to go into vertex edit mode. I'm going to press E to extrude on the Z axis and type in 10. So right now we just have this line, this edge that's uh, 10 meters tall. And I'm just going to add some loop cuts with uh, control R. I'm going to add seven cuts right there. So we have uh, like eight edges right here. Next, you're going to want to click on this bottom vertex right here and go over here to Object Data Properties to add a vertex group. And I'm just going to name this Focus. And this is going to be the tip of our lightning right here. So I'm just going to assign that, make sure it has a weight of one. And you're just using that one vertex right there. And then I'm going to go back into Object Mode. So I'm going to start adding some modifiers. And the first one I'm going to add is a Displace. This might look a little different for you if you're not in 2.9 over here, but I originally made this in 2.8. So whatever version you're using, hopefully it should be fine. I'm going to add a new texture and go over to the texture tab, and I'm just going to add a cloud texture. And right now you're not going to see this working because it's trying to use the normal direction. And since this is just a line right now, um, it doesn't really have, it doesn't really know what direction to move in. So I'm going to choose X and I'm also going to add a subdivision surface modifier and move it up. And this will give us some extra geometry. And if you want it to be more smooth, you can just uh, move the viewport and render up. I'm going to do that until it's about four. You can see we have a lot of detail right now, but it's really, but you can see it's like a very small and noisy texture. So I'm just going to go back into the texture tab over here. I'm just going to turn this up to something like one or maybe 1.5 right now. And if you want it to be smoother, turn the depth down. If you want it to be a little more noisy, you can turn the depth up right there. And for the coordinates right here, we have it set to local, but I'm actually going to change that to object. And right now we don't have any other objects in our scene. So I'm going to add, so I'm going to add an empty and I'm just going to use a plane axis for this. I'm going to move it up and put it over here. And I'm going to name this control bolt disp for displace. And I'm also going to name this bolt mesh for lightning bolt. So go over to your lightning bolt and just choose that empty we just made right here. You can see when we move that, our bolt will deform. And we can use this if you want to like basically uh, give the bolt a different shape. And I also want to make this a little more intense. So I'm just going to change this to like 2.5. We can see it's a little more wavy right now. And I'm just going to duplicate this modifier a few times with Shift D. So we have three of them now. The first one is uh, using the X direction. The next one I'm going to use Y. And this one I'm going to use Z. So now we have it moving all over in every direction. And for the Z, I'm just going to change this to one because I don't want the Z to be as uh, as intense. And right now this is still just an edge. So I'm going to toggle all these so they're small and we want to give this some depth. So I'm going to add a skin. And right now we're in wireframe, but I'm going to go into solid view. And you want to make sure this is after all of the displacement or else, as you can see, it's not really going to look right. And then I'm going to go back into edit mode, switch over to uh, make this transparent with Alt-Z. I'm going to select that bottom point right here, make sure proportional editing is on. I'm going to switch that from smooth to sharp. And I'm going to press Control-A to uh, scale that down. I'm just going to hit zero so it's completely sharp, and then scale this up until it's about as big as we want. So I think that should be good. Now it's looking a little more normal, but it's pretty uh, geometric right now. So I'm just going to hit smooth shading. And if you want that to be even smoother, you can just add a subdivision surface after that, like that. And if it still looks a little too jagged, you can just up your resolution over here or change your, uh, your displacement texture. So now you can see that this is not touching the original point that we want it to be touching. So in here for vertex group, I'm just going to set that to focus. And it's still not working because we need to invert this. And we need to add this vertex group to each of our displacements. So now you can see it's touching our, uh, our origin point right there. And if you want this to be a little easier to control, 
you can add another empty. I'm just going to add a circle, rotate it 90 on the X like that. And I'm just going to parent both of these to that circle, control P. Now, whenever you move this, everything else follows like that. And if you want this to be shaped differently, you just move this around right here. Another cool thing about this setup is if you want this to have multiple branches, you can just go back into edit mode and start extruding some points right here like that. And now we have some points, but you can see they're still like kind of fat at the end. So if you do that, just select all the points you just made at the end with a shift and left mouse button like that. And then uh, control A and scale those down to zero. And if you're in proportional editing, make sure this proportional size up here, you might want to make that a little smaller. Like that. Now it looks like lightning. Uh, next step. I would say it's shading. So we can just go into our shading tab over here. And I'm just going to use Eevee for this. Um, this should work fine in cycles too, but Eevee is a little faster. So I'm just going to click on our lightning bolt and add a new texture up here. I'm going to delete the principal BSDF and add in a mixed shader. We're going to mix two shaders together, one of which is an emission, and the other one is a transparent. And you can just plug those into those two shader slots right here. And also for the transparent to work in Eevee anyway, you have to press N to go into the side menu, change this blend mode to alpha blend, and I'm gonna turn the shadow mode off so it doesn't have a shadow. You can also do that down here in the material properties. There should be a spot for it over here. So what we're gonna do over here is the uh, animated part of our lightning. And basically we want our lightning bolt to be completely transparent and then look like it's uh, traveling down to the point and then going away. So to do this, I'm going to add in a vector math right here, and we're going to use length. And what that does is uh, it just tells us how far away things are from the origin point. And for it to work with our origin point, we have to add a texture coordinate and set that to object. And that just uh, makes everything kind of based around our origin point over here. So if we add a math node now, and set that to greater than, we'll be able to visualize how far away things are from that origin point. And when we made our first line, we made it 10 meters tall, so we know that this should be 10. If we do 10, this should be completely black. Um, I like to turn this to 11 because with all of these things being displaced and deformed, um, sometimes you get a little white up here when it's at 10. So I just set it to 11 just to be safe. And so if we plug this now into our factor and plug that all in, we can see that the greater than is controlling that, but it's going in not the direction I want it to go. So I'm going to change this to less than instead. And now it seems like it's traveling in the right direction like that. And what we're going to do is turn this into a node group. So to make this a little more organized, what I'm going to do is add in an invert node because I want to use a slider to control this. So it's just basically on and off. We don't have to uh, know that it is to be turned up to 11. So I'm going to add another math node. I'm just going to duplicate this and set this to multiply and make sure the second value is 11 and plug this in here. And basically to understand what the invert does is it's looking at this color and inverting it. So if this is black, which is zero, um, this should actually be accurate where when the factor is zero, it's zero, and when this is one, it's inverting it, making this white. So if we set this to white, it's basically going backwards now, where zero would be one, and one would be zero. So what I want is when this is zero, this looks completely off. And so I think I need to turn this white to do that. And now we can see that zero is off and one is on and anywhere in between. If we animate this, it's like traveling through the bolt. So I also want to be able to control the opacity. And to do that, I'm going to add in another math node. I'm just going to keep that set to add and uh, clamp that. If we set this to zero, it's completely opaque. And if we set this to one, it's completely transparent. How I want this to work is when it's at zero, it's completely transparent. And when it's at one, it's completely opaque. So I, once again, I'm going to use another invert node right here. 
And we're going to leave that set to white so that this value right here is inverted. Plug that in and it should work fine like that. So now we have uh, opacity control, control of how our bolt travels through that shape right there. And we have color and strength too. And that's pretty much all you need for this. So I'm just going to select everything except this uh, texture coordinate. And I'm going to hit control G to group that. I'm just going to set this up real quick. So press N to go into these options right here. Go to node. I'm going to change this to vector object. So we know that this should be uh, using object coordinates. I'm going to plug this into the factor and change this name to bolt length. Going to plug this one in and change this to bolt opacity. We want to control the strength of the emission and also the color. And then when we go out, we have all the controls we need right here. And you can change this color too, like that. And I'm just going to rename this lightning bolt. And next, I'm going to show you how to animate this. So I'm just going to bring a timeline up down here. And we're just going to make something that looks kind of like this. So at frame one, I want the length to be zero. So I'm going to insert a keyframe there with I. Make sure that's selected so we can see our keyframes too over here. And we want this to travel down. So here, I'm going to set it to one right there. And it's moving pretty slowly. so. You can just drag this other keyframe over a little until it's the speed that you want. So that's looking pretty good, but I want that to be linear. Like that. And I'm also going to make sure the opacity is set so that when it strikes, we can make it fade out like this. And as you can see over here, there are some like overlapping little bits and you can change that by uh, ch unchecking show back face and hopefully that works. And if you want this to be brighter, you just turn the strength up. So if you want this to look like it's bridging electricity, like with a Jacob's ladder or a Tesla coil, you can just select all these and duplicate them like that. You can tap back into edit mode and add this other one at the top to your vertex group. So now the top and the bottom will stay in place even if you move this like that. You would want to uh, add a new material, just duplicate this with this, uh, with this button right here and remove all of these keyframes here. And instead of animating this, you would want to animate this right here. Another thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of all of these. And if at any point your skin modifier gets messed up, you just have to select one of these vertices, go over to your skin modifier, and hit mark root, and it should work again. So an easy way to animate this without adding any keyframes is to select it and then go over to your location on the side. For this, I'm going to use the Y location. You just click on that and type in frame and hit enter, and it'll match your current frame. So if you move this now, you can see it moving. And if you want it to go slower, you can just divide it by some number. So 50 seems too high, maybe five. It's a little better. And now we have this like bridging electricity. And if you want the top to be sharp too, you can just tab into edit mode, control A and scale that down to zero also like that. Now it looks a little better to add a little more detail. I'm just going to tab back into edit mode, select everything, duplicate it and to change this interpolation over here to smooth again and make sure you have that checked. Choose the middle one. I'm just going to move that over to the side like this, but you want to make sure that uh, connected only is there. Then it looks a little like this. And you can just do this a few times to get multiple branches like that. And that's all there is to it. Once again, you can grab the lightning pack on Gumroad with some pre-made animations, as well as my glitch effect, nice guy HDRI pack, and a bunch of free wallpapers. Give me a follow on Instagram to see what I'm working on. Links are always in the description. Have a good one. See ya.